Well, thank you. Thank you for that video. That was incredible. It was incredible to go back and just relive some of those many, uh, memories. Um, thank you so much to the induction committee. Thank you, or congratulations to the other inductees tonight. And just thank you. This is really an incredible honor. Um, I need to thank my coaches, Tom Johnson and the late Kevin Thorburn, and all the others along the way. Um, it was actually my very first coach, Ruth, after my very first swim meet, had said to my parents, she got three gold times. They don't do that in their first swim meet. I think we have an Olympian here. And my parents, they were athletes. They just looked at her and they're like, yeah, right. They did not believe her because they had only put me in swimming at the time, so they thought until I could play basketball. But if you witnessed my hand-eye coordination, you know this was for the best. So I really have to thank my parents, especially for embracing a sport that at the beginning they didn't understand, but they really were the best supporters and the best motivators along the way. And I come from a very competitive family, so much so that no one said it any better than my grandma. When I got back from the Olympics, I was on her couch and she said, so you were eighth at the Olympics. And I was like, yeah. She goes, well, you were always a great runner. Maybe you were in the wrong sport. So, <laughs> so there was no egos in my family, don't worry about that. But my, my favorite memory from that Olympic final was actually right before in the ready room. And at the Sydney Olympics, Australia is huge for swimming. So there was 10,000 people in the stands. And I hadn't been able to see my mom who was there in the stands. No matter what race I had, I couldn't find her. So five minutes before my Olympic final started, I'm the first race of the night. And they're just in, turning on the cameras. You can't see it on pool deck, but they've got a feed. And they're showing the pool deck and some people. And what do you know, on the TV, in the ready room, they show a picture of my mom wearing this big, dorky maple leaf hat sitting there. And when I marched out for the final, she was the first person I saw. And she had actually got to sit in the front row that night, which was really cool. So it was a really kind of full circle, cool moment where I was like, Mom, we made it. And I remember after that race, in the warm down pool, thinking, if I never swim fast again, this will all still be worth it. And through sport, I had learned nothing will ever be as physically hard as the training. The triples, three practices a day, the altitude, 20, 25 hours a week, nothing has come close to that since. Nothing will ever be as stressful as standing behind the blocks in an Olympic trials, knowing you have 60 seconds to do it right, or you'll be waiting another four years. And nothing will top winning the Pan Am Games gold medal in Winnipeg in front of all my family and friends. And I, I still remember that day. I mean, I was 17 years old, just barely, just turned 17. And I was pretty relaxed in the prelims. I had qualified second, and I knew I was going between an American sandwich that night. I had the reigning Olympic champion on one side and another one on the other. And I was handling it pretty good. I was pretty focused until I finished my warm up and I made my way back to that ready room. And so many people in the stands, hey Kelly, waving at me, saying hi. And that's when I realized my dad was right. He did single handedly sell half the tickets to that final session that night. <laughs> and that got me nervous when they were all there. But I tried to refocus and I was walking out, marching out for that final. And I remember thinking, don't look at the stands. There's so many people I know, just don't look. And I looked up. And I saw my parents and I saw reporters sitting with them and I just like looked right back down. And I just, I tried to focus and funny enough, my parents were actually live on the radio and they stayed live on the radio for that entire race. And the next day I went home to visit them in between races and they replayed. They said, they wanna, we wanna replay the broadcast from Kelly winning the gold next, or last night. Um, and so they went live the whole race and I learned through the first half of the race that not only had my parents embraced the sport of swimming, they were actually now experts. <laughs> and it was pretty funny to hear some of the things they said, but at the halfway mark when we turned, you could clearly hear my mom just say right into the micro or microphone, oh Kelly, fifth. <laughs> but the only person on deck at that time that jumped was my coach, because he knew I'd actually gone out in the fastest split I'd ever gone out in. And I always came back in my race. Um, and so slowly, you saw I was able to reel in those two Americans and pass them and touch the wall first. And it was a cool moment because um, not, just, not just the fact that I'm married to an American now, and I love to rub that in, um, but Mark Tewksbury was my hero. And the reason I started swimming was watching him pass the American to win that gold medal in 92. So, and funny enough, I ended up in the exact same event as him. 
And the next day, I did get to meet him again for the second time, the first time you saw that picture at the Pan Am pool. Um, and I was happy. I asked him, could I get my picture taken with him again? Because at the Pan Am pool when I had met him when I was 12, back when he had to get the film developed, my sister, Deanna, took the picture of me and Mark Tewksbury, my hero, and when we got it developed, she'd cut his head off. <laughs> so finally in 99, I got the picture again, and I got that gold medal. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you to my teammates, Riley and my sister, Deanna, for pushing me every day in practice to be a better athlete, to be faster, stronger, and win those races. Thank you to my friends for letting me copy their homework with all those classes I missed in high school. And it was a lot. And thank you to my parents and my family for all those rides to practice, for paying all those training and competition bills, coming to all my swim meets on those hot pool decks, all my family members for getting up in the middle of the night to watch on TV because the time change with Australia was not very forgiving. Um, and my mom, who also, so much food. We ate so much food she made. And I used to wake up at 4.30 in the morning, go to practice for two hours, straight to school with wet hair, straight back to the pool afterwards, train for three more hours, and be home by about 7.30 at night. So my mom used to pack me breakfast, lunches, and after-school snacks. And she would always label the after-school snack bag ASS, which I think was a pretty fair reflection of my teenage attitude at the time. <laughs> So they say it takes a village, and I sure had an incredible one here in Manitoba and across Canada. And now, as a parent, I can only hope that my children find the perfect sport for them. Maybe it will be basketball after all. But whatever sport it is, I just hope that my husband and I can support them to chase their dreams the way that my family and friends did for me. Thank you.